Lucy Daddy, perfect. And here to explain to you the importance of learning how to draw before we uh, try to be too artistic with the work and exaggerate it. And at the same time, I'm going to take you guys through the process. Actually, this is a, a foundational video for a, a painting that I'm going to be doing, but I want to, instead of transferring it onto the board right here, I am actually just going to draw it on with charcoal. It's going to be of a portrait. It's going to be essentially a video of how exactly the Florence Academy develops everything. It's going to be, it's going to tie in all the drawing fundamentals, everything that I go over in the videos. It's going to be well worth the watch. So I will articulate that as I also talk about the topic, which I mentioned just a second ago. All right, so let's get started. We start with the bottom of the chin and the hairline right here and the top of the head. And like everything, I'm just gonna keep this very simple so that I can fix it up. And I think what I'm gonna do with this one is make it, uh, I'm gonna work with the shadows a little bit more, make it less that I'm, I'm really hatching the lines out. I'll, I'll do a basic hatching in the beginning, but I think what I wanna do, perhaps I can do this, like we're just really gonna simplify this, this shape and I'll start working with the shadows a little bit more because you know, we're working with charcoal and it, we can, uh, we can do that, it affords us a little bit of uh, leverage. Sometimes it uh, can be a little bit looser with it than uh, with, with the planthole. Anyway, getting to the, the topic of uh, creating your own art and, and especially the academic process, right? Which I think, uh, and probably rightfully so, has, has a, uh, an air of being kind of cold and not artistic, right? Um, I think for the most part that uh, we can we can agree that that kind of has it has that reputation and um, I think that happens because uh, we can fall into just wanting to express the 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 uh, like oh how fine we can get this brush stroke and they're very beautiful brush strokes we can turn the form which means make it look three-dimensional we can do very really nice realistic effects and that can be oftentimes, sometimes it is not artistic, it's not very expressive per se. We might not be saying anything, we might not be telling a story, uh, right? So we can get, we can, I guess we can get too technical with it and only do that the whole time, that's it. But the reason why I think it's important to learn this is because uh, being an artist is extremely important. It's how you can uh, really... Um, you can tell a story, you can really uh, you know, change people in a good way. It can be a, something wholesome to look at. And uh, right, I think telling a story is a, a huge part of it. And really, I hate saying this, you know, because I, I feel kind of like a woman saying it, but like really inspiring, being in, like inspiring somebody, right? And, but to do that, there is a certain truth behind technique and, and, and uh, you're just having a smooth touch to everything or what have you, right? Knowing how to, to do a line, really being humble and observing from nature. So it's essentially a language we have to learn to better accentuate our um, artistic drive. So that's, I think, I think it's extremely important as artists to not be lazy in our, you know, in our training and our studies uh, and day-to-day -day activities. And that's why like drawing is one of the best ways to push yourself forward in your painting and your work because uh, in this case, especially if you're, you, know, you know the fundamentals, you can practice the fundamentals, uh, right? And that's how you can really excel at what you're doing. I think it's, it's extremely important to know how to, uh, you need to know the language of of drawing and painting, right? This is this is extremely important, and uh, so that's. I mean, I guess that's that's a short answer, and we can go from there from it. But uh, here's the thing: when we're studying, if you're studying at one of these academies, perhaps it's the Florence Academy of Art, um, perhaps it's you know uh, wherever, perhaps it's just online. Just because you're not thinking about your art at the time does not mean that you need to always not think about it. So what I mean by that is sometimes you need to lend your time and yourself to solid study. Just focus on that study, but also in the back of your head or in the front of your head, but just not always acting on it, like accentuating things and, or exaggerating things. You want, you want to be, cop like not copying, but you want to be accurately observing and drawing and understanding. Sometimes you need to take that time to get better 
at what you're doing in the interest uh, of, of being able to actually create the paintings that you want down the road. Because I see a lot of people who, they have very good artistic ideas. They're artistic people. They're expressive. They express themselves, right? Um, in, in a whole, whole, wholesome way. But their lack of technique holds them back. Which is why, exactly why I, I do what I do and I try to be as open as I can with as much knowledge as I can about this stuff. I really do want people to, um, you know, take advantage of what's out there. Back when I first started studying, we didn't have... YouTube or any of this stuff. We didn't have the resources we have today. And um, so it, it, was, it was totally different. And now there's so many resources, there's so many great artists and uh, to be taken advantage of. So I said I wanted to do this uh, a little bit more, um, you know, just big shadowy blockings. This is what I want to do. So I'll work with this. This is... <laughs> I might mess this up. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Anyway, what I'm going to do here, let's jump back to this for a second. I am just simply going to, obviously I'm blocking this in. I'm going to try to see just the big shadow shapes and then I can hatch them out with my eraser. So in, this, in a sense, I'm, it's almost like I'm painting because in paint, you really, you don't always use lines and hatch things out. You also use, um, obviously like a brush and big brush strokes and getting big shapes at one time, which is one of the reasons why I love painting. It's much quicker because I'm lazy. But anyway, it's very, it's very important to learn the fundamentals so that you can more accurately express yourself as a painter. Now, uh, back in the day, people weren't always, uh, like Leonardo and Michelangelo, all those guys weren't considered artists. They were considered painters, sculptors. It was the art of painting, the art of sculpture, the art of being, the art of medicine, it was like the craft of, the craft of. So the reason why I bring this up is, is because art, the, the, being an artist in art, it's almost like there's no defi definition for it. It's like people can't really, they're like, what is art? Everybody's always asking what art is. And when, when we can't really define it and when beauty and ugly kind of the lines are blurred because they say, oh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. We have no standards. We need to set those standards. The Greeks did it, right? The classical, you know, and the Romans had it. They had a classical sense. They, they taught people about beauty, and that's what artists should do. We should be grounded in what we believe. There's no uh, shame in being grounded or believing in something. There's no shame, especially artists. We need to have a direction. We can't be every which way. In, in our work, but we do need to be solid and not lazy asses. We, we need to do the work um, and, and really practice as much as we can every day, especially with drawing. This is 101 right here, this type of stuff. This is 101. And, uh, you know, and I constantly, when I'm drawing, I'm, I'm constantly taking notes of, of what I need to improve on, what perhaps what I've gone backwards on right you're not always going forwards and you have you have to see that accurately and not get down on yourself but man up and, and take the steps necessary right which is work patience and and, and and get back what you lost but this is these are my uh my this is my attitude and this is my belief and, and where this type of work stands with artistic creation right I don't like a lot of the work that I do. Some of the work I think can be too technical, um, but you're always reaching out and, and, and observing what you can do better with the hope that you can. And so that's, that's what I'm, I'm continuously trying to better myself with it even now, even after I've been trained. Because we constantly train. When I left the Florence Academy, it wasn't like, okay, that's it, I have nothing else to learn, right? I feel like a lot of this stuff might be a little bit cl cliche, but I don't think it is. I think this is, this is, this is how it is. It is what it is, right? I mean, look, I'm a pretty straightforward guy. I'm not one of these like sunshine and rainbows, like, oh, express yourself and it doesn't matter and blah, blah, blah. I'm not one of these types of people. I was just at this point that I realized that I forgot what it was talking about. I blathered on for a little you know, bit in hopes that it would come back and it, in there fact, never did, so in instead of being a and editing it out, I thought I'd main right? up and just tell you exactly what 
happened. So I'm looking at all this here, this big shape, the shadow shapes. I'm drawing the light shapes at the same time I'm drawing the shadow shapes. What do I mean? <laughs> Tell you is that when I am drawing the shadow shapes, I am thinking about the light shapes. I'm actually drawing this. You wouldn't be able to tell because this is so wrong, but that's what I am attempting to do right now. And I'm also thinking of this. So in essence, I'm seeing this and this at the same time, but also trying to understand it. I'm going off a photograph. It's not a great photograph. There's form, there's structure, there's anatomy in it. So at the same time, I'm not, all, I'm not drawing all these little ridges and bumps and, and all this stuff going on in here yet because it's strategic. But I am thinking about it, I am studying it, and I am trying to understand her three-dimensionally, and if she, if she was here, I'd be walking around studying her. That's what I'd be doing. Every angle, every angle, so it shows in the work. Shows in the work. This is not sight size, by the way. It's in comparative measurements. So, again, I, I touched on this before when uh, in, working with uh, sight size, right? We're working with sight size. There's a, a misconception with that, that you're only supposed to, you know, that, that it seems that it's blossomed or rather taken root, that sight size is not a good way of getting form, which is total bull because you need to learn to look for the form, but you, you know, the form, which is the anatomy, is your understanding that you're putting into it. You don't need to be measuring sight size every single little piece, but use sight size for the big shapes, flash your eye back and forth, get the impressions, and then you put your understanding of the anatomy in there. That's separate, right? Separate. We artists, we need to be doing several things at once. And when you first start drawing, it's, it's extremely difficult, especially when you're doing it in this method, the classical uh, or the classical realist method, um, because you're given like say five things to do. That might be uh, simplify the figure, draw with the straight lines, um, you know, look at this width, that width, look at this shape here. You, you're given several things that you have to juggle in your mind. And at first you, you're gonna wrestle with doing just one because you're not used to doing any of them and that's very hard. Like I likened it to, to, to drawing in the, or to driving in the last video. Right, driving can be very difficult, but once you get the hang of it, you're able to talk and, and focus more and, and uh, multitask, right? I'm not talking about like <laughs> doing your phone or anything like that, but I'm saying it becomes something that you're able to do without as much thought. So you can lend your, your, the, 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 your, your mind to other things once you get the hang of uh, you know, certain things in drawing, right? So once you start learning how to simplify, once you start learning how to see the larger figure, then well, then you can go and, and work on tightening your, your technique up, right? In paint, you have the added, you know, like added value range. There's more values in paint than there is in drawing. You have color, you have application. <laughs> you have better application. You have better color. <laughs> it goes on and on. And so that's why it's so important to learn the right way and to practice the right way, not just practice, but practice the right way so we don't form bad habits, make sure we're on, on the right track. And my friends, again, I will say this again, I live stream on Twitch for this very reason so that you can see the full process and you can hear me uh, talk about all these things extensively. You can ask me these questions and we can go more in depth into it and see things that you can't see in a video because I try not to make the videos too long, all right? Try not to make them too long. But at this point, right here, so if you're looking, ah, oh, son of a bitch, what happened? My eyes are squinting down just a little bit like this, and in that manner, I'm unifying the shape. In my brain, though, you might not be able to tell, probably not, but I am trying to understand her form so that when the time comes, when the big shapes are correct, I'm able to sculpt the figure out properly and that understanding of form will in fact show. <laughs> that is what I'm trying to do with this. So here we go. We're just continuously, I'm going around the whole shape, the whole shape at once. And we can also use our eraser to come in here and slightly tickle, <laughs> just tickling right here. I'm not just trying to copy shapes. I'm trying to understand the whole figure at once. 
right? So say I'll give you a demonstration. So, so this is starting to form like, it's, obviously it's not, it's not great yet. It's not great yet, but once we have kind of the idea of what we want to do with this and we have kind of a basic impression, an artist, for example, can really do some nice technique or you know maybe make a, something emerging out of the shadows, right? And we know how to lose the edges. We know how to sharpen certain edges. We know how to accentuate certain edges without losing the anatomy. And so your idea to make perhaps a figure that's partially a ghost emerging from the atmosphere from, uh, into the light is gonna be more dominant because you know how to do this technical stuff, which again, in the beginning, it's not good to exaggerate everything. It's good to learn and to correct and to hone your eyes and your senses. If you're exaggerating things, you're exaggerating lines that you have to measure other points off of, and it's too much, it's too much. So it's one of the reasons why it's very important, my friends, colleagues, nerds, peasants, important to learn how to draw. Now, here's what I'm gonna do at this stage. I want y'all to see this finished piece. I'm going to actually time lapse it forward a little bit and I might talk a little bit about it as I go. We'll see. Time lapse, go! I have worked the drawing up. I definitely did not have to go home uh, last night because I was tired and didn't get the drawing. Instead, I, uh, it was only five minutes ago that I started the time lapse. It's at this point that I am detailing the smaller shapes, uh, but in the interest of the larger shape. So essentially what I mean by that is if I'm trying to get these, the form into the, the, the cheek, right, the cheekbone right here, putting these marks. I'm looking at this entire piece right here trying to understand the form and I am doing more subtle marks but I am also trying to correct this shape right here. So I'm looking at this shape, right, the width, the height, everything in a very basic fashion just as if I was blocking it in but we're just doing a little bit finer detail. I'm thinking about the zygomatic arch here. It's this bone that kind of wraps up around the side of the temple of the, the skull here. It kind of comes up and you can kind of see it you know, coming through here. Uh, and then we have the jaw area. We have one, two, three, and I over-exaggerated this in, in my uh, demonstration. But this is essentially uh, how we go about doing it. So I'm using much more subtle marks at this point, but again, the mentality is the same as in the blocking. We're trying to uh, keep an eye on uh, the entire shape all at once and correct the big shape. And in doing so, you can both detail and fix the large shape at the same time, which is quite nice. And this right here, I'm going, going to, I'm studying the chin, right? And kind of outlining where I think it might be just a little bit. You don't want to get too, um, you don't want to exaggerate this too much. You don't want to go outline too much. It's okay to kind of put in a little bit. It gives it a little bit of a kick, a little bit of form, and then we can soften the edges if we need to. So then in essence, you have a nice transition of sharp and soft edges and lines, which is something that makes things turns, makes turn, make it look more sculptural. Uh, and so I can bring the light out just a little bit. But uh, here we have it. Uh, essentially, look, I'm not trying to get, uh, I'm not gonna work this up to uh, perfection at this point because there's a lot that I can correct when I get to the painting phase. Everything that you add in your work, whether it's uh, detail or a shadow shape or in painting when it comes to color, uh, deepening the color of the lights and darks. Everything you do is going to bring it one step closer to how it is potentially in reality. So you're gonna see more, right? So the more information you put, the more you see, which is why it's very important to be able to put less information to see and correct those shapes in the very beginning. And you're gonna be better off. It's better foundation going forward. But as we go, it should naturally progress. It takes a lot of time and practice, but this, my friends, is how we freaking work a preliminary sketch if we're just drawing right on the board. And 
I'll show you guys the full process, the painting process of this, uh, of this portrait going forward. Until next time, Luz Gadetti, out.